Hey guys, Mr. Myas is here, and in this uh, video presentation, I'm going to be discussing observational studies and experiments. How do you know which one's which? Um, and there's a lot of vocabulary in here, so if you want to write these uh, vocabulary down, it's probably a wise decision. Decision. But I'm going to talk about, um, you know, how do we tell the difference between an observational study and an experiment? Because they're very, they're two very different things. Um, as you can see here, the uh, the little boy here is uh, is 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 very carefully watching the butterfly. This is an observation, and this kid's doing an experiment. So, um, how do we tell the difference? Well, let's first talk about observational studies. So, there are two types of observational studies. There's a retrospective study. Now, the key uh, part of this word here is retro. When you think of retro, you should think in the past. So, this is any study that's done by gathering data that already exists. So if, if, if there's data out there on the internet and you're trying to find something out about something, you're gonna go look that up and you're gonna gather those data. You're gonna put them together and make some sort of study. So an observational study that's retrospective is looking at stuff that already exists that's in the past. The next one is not in the past. It is in the present prospective study. So it's in the here and the now. It's what we're doing to study and gather data that's happening right now. Now what's really important is that we're not actually doing any what we call treatments. We're not making anybody or anything do anything. A, a, a good example of this is like when, um, you know, when somebody is just, uh, you know, the, the little kid here, the little kid that's looking at the butterfly. You know, he's not putting the butterfly in, an, in a certain environment. He's not making the butterfly eat nectar or whatever. He's just watching the butterfly, seeing what it's doing, and maybe taking some data about, you know, how the wings move or what, what's going on. So if you're just taking data and you're not actually uh, putting any treatments on, that's called an, a prospective observational study. Now, the interesting thing about these studies is that you cannot imply cause and effect. So any type of observational study cannot be used to say, to say that one uh, variable causes the other. So what about an experiment? Well, you don't have to be a, uh, Dr. Frankenstein, uh, Frankenstein um, to do an experiment, but what you have to, or, or Beaker, and I forgot what the doctor's name is, um, but there are some things that you need to be, be able to do. The first thing is you need to randomize uh, your participants into treatment groups. So you're going to have random assignment into treatments and those treatments are some sort of thing you're going to do to or have your participants uh, participate in. So we call them participants or you can call them experimental units if you're not actually using people um, and you're giving them them those treatments. Now we can have several different treatments in one experiment for instance, um, let's say that we are um, experimenting here on Beaker, and Beaker has, uh, we're interested in knowing if um, having a scarf on is, uh, is gonna protect him from the electricity. So he's really got two factors going on, whether or not he has a scarf, and what uh, the electricity itself. So maybe we wanna break, so those are two factors in my experiment, and maybe we wanna break those up into different levels. So I actually have two levels here. I have a scarf on, scarf off. There's two levels of that one factor. And here, maybe we want to uh, shoot them up with some different voltages, maybe uh, 30 volts and 60 volts, and, uh, and, and compare those. So those are other levels of that factor. Now, all of those levels put together is equal to the total number of treatments. So I've got um, scarf on, scarf off, so that's two, and then 30 and 60, that's a total of four different treatment groups or treatment levels in this case, or treatments in this case that Beaker is going to have to uh, endure in, uh, in our experiment. Now the thing about an experiment, if it is a randomly done, uh, random assigned experiment, and it's done using all the steps, which I have in, a, in another video, the, um, the principles of experimental design, then we can, in fact, use a good randomized experiment to imply that there is a cause and effect relationship of, between two variables. Amazing, right? Cause and effect can be implied by an experiment. So how do you tell the difference between an experiment or an observational study? It really comes down to the treatments, folks. If, in fact, you do a treatment, so to do an experiment, you actually have to make participants do something. 
Um, when you explain this, like let's say you uh, have a, a problem where you have to explain why is something an observational um, study or an experiment, always explain what that treatment is in the context of the problem the, um, when you're explaining why something is an experiment. Just don't say, oh, because uh, there's no treatments done. You have to say, well, because people, because Beaker wasn't actually given shock therapy, okay? Um, if in fact that was a, a you know if we were observing uh, um, some some data on shock um, and we didn't actually give people shock then that's an observation if we actually shocked them that's an experiment but you have to be uh, clear on your context okay all right so that's the difference between an observation and an experiment if you're in my class we'll take a look at some different ones and i'll have you determine which is which all right see you soon guys bye